Well, welcome back. Today we're in Train Sim World 2, and we're doing the Sherman Hill downloadable content. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about Sherman Hill, but mostly I just want to talk through some of my frustrations with the playability of Train Sim World 2. Now, so playability-wise, there's a lot I like about Train Sim World that. I find is uh, superior to the old train simulator, particularly about the uncoupling and coupling and the 3D models of the cars and the paint schemes. And a lot of things are, are just better. Um, maybe not so much the routes, but you know, even the routes we're now using the Unreal Engine, so we should be getting better performance and you know, better optimization. But that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about overall playability. And what I'm looking for as a railroader, and I find that uh, they what you get is you get the options in Train Sim World to there's actually well three options. You know, you may look at it as you know you could you can walk around what they call free roam, just kind of walking around. Uh, that option really is. It's just basically walking until you find a particular scenario that you want to step into. And so, otherwise you're just walking around the property and the, the route uh, on foot. And, but, you know, I'm really not talking that about that so much as operating trains, railroading. And so that leaves us with two options. Uh, that are given to us. One is you go into scenario mode um, and you select, I say scenario mode, but you have a selection of scenarios. There's also uh, some selection of training scenarios which are good. I mean you may argue whether they're good or not but it's good that they have the training scenarios is what I'm saying and then you know once you complete those uh, and I have my frustrations with them too because sometimes I can't complete them you know it'll give me a particular task to do uh, I do it as far as I can tell and it doesn't want to progress to the next step and I don't think this is any fault of my own this is almost like a failure on the part of that scenario where the script doesn't recognize that you've completed a task for whatever reason I don't know if others are having this trouble if it's just me but uh, that's not true for all routes, but occasionally I'll get into a training scenario and I, it's like I can't get any further with this. <clears throat> that's frustrating, but that too is not really what I'm talking about. Set aside the training scenarios. When you just have plain old five or six scenarios to do, uh, those scenarios are limited to whatever script that they put in there. In other words, they tell you what time uh, and what particular uh, type of uh, locomotive you're going to use and what consist is there, what you know trains you got, where you're going to go and what you're going to do. Step by te step, you, you're going through your objectives and until and you complete the scenario. Uh, not to say that they're not fun. They could be fun. Uh, they're not really have a fun repeatability factor. Uh, but you know they're limited you can't change the weather you can't make it snow rain or be fall or spring or summer you, you don't have those options it is what it is and uh, and you I find that they're they're actually worth doing because sometimes they are have they have fun but you learn a lot about the route by going through whatever scenarios they have but and you know as far as train simulation and railroading uh, you know I want to get set free I want to be able to go go uh, play with trains and so they have the timetables and I find that the timetables you know they may have 15 20 or more timetables uh, that you can do uh, throughout a 24-hour period and so I find them to be the best option because then you can select a time of day um, at least in the sense that you can select uh, a particular um, train uh, and locomotive and then find out what what services it has throughout the day pick that pick the service around the time of day you want 
select the weather and the season, the date, whatever. And so that gives you the most flexibility. But then, then you start playing it and then you have it. Train Sim World sucks the fun out of railroading. Because as soon as you get in and start doing your timetable, it's no different than a scenario. They're telling you step by step, objective by objective, task by task, what to complete until you completed the objective. And, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like being on a job that you, you've learned and you've mastered and you've done for a few years. And, your boss gets promoted and you get a new boss from the outside. He comes over and he looks over your shoulder and all day long, he's telling you what to do. <laughs> it's like, what are you here for? What are you doing? Why are you telling me what to do? And you're sucking the fun out of life. And that's what these uh, timetables to me are doing. Now, they're actually, um, they work actually fairly well when you're doing a passenger route. Uh, and and I don't mind them that much uh, because you know you have a you do have a time schedule a crunch uh, you know stations to stop out and people to pick up and places to drop them off and places to, to uh, take to the train at the end of the day those things I don't mind so much but if you want to do you know particularly American freight which I love and you want to do that then these timetables they suck the sap out of life they just they just do I mean I don't want somebody standing over my shoulder and telling me go forward 400 yards stop the train objective complete flip this the uh, the uh, the turnout and back it up we put it in the reverse objective complete go back with 300 yards and couple up the formation objective complete this gets to be like will you just go home come on I, I'm, I don't like this I don't want that so I find myself every time I get a new downloadable content I'm looking for the free roam the free roam set me free guys no objectives to complete and thank goodness many of the routes have free roam um, usually, you know, like I think, I think the the first one that came to Train Sim World, the Sand Patch Grade, they have the they have the one, they have the free rooms, they, what they call the sandbox, and uh, and it's the only one. But what what is so frustrating about it is when you're in the sandbox, you can't get out of the yard. You you can you can shovel, you can shove trains around, shuffle them around. Uh, all throughout the yard, uh, but you know, <laughs> with no purpose, you know. Um, you're saying, well, why are you saying no purpose? You just said that you didn't want to have purpose. Well, I want to, I do want to have purpose, but I don't want you to tell me, you know. And I'm going to go through an example here in a minute, how it should look. You know, when you have the HUD up, you can press, uh, I think it's the T key. When you press T, it tells you all the objectives and tasks you're supposed to do. You know, why not, instead of doing that, tell us that the, you know, the industries and what cars are supposed to be dropped off and what cars are supposed to be picked up at a particular industry. And the objectives then become individual tasks of turning on the, the lights and the power and the, <laughs> and the fuel pump and you know, and the, the, the air valves, the brake valves. And, I mean, once you've gone through training, you know how to do that. No, the objectives, the, the, those, those should only be the industry you're going to, what cars you're supposed to be dropping off, and what cars you're supposed to be picking up, and what's the next industry, and where are you going to do there. And that would be awesome. Because if you go to, an, you know, an, an industry, and you're supposed to... Uh, pick up you know two cars and drop off two but there's three cars there you may have to do a little shuffling but instead of selling somebody telling you back it up and put it in reverse for 50 yards and go forward no you figure that out you figure out how to back it up and and, and, and shove off the, the one that stays and pick up the two and and, and and replace it with the two new ones you figure that out that's that's part of the fun 
of, uh, you know, it's part of the solving the puzzle that is completely taken out of the game. And that's what, that's what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking for them to step aside and let us play the game. Give us access to these industries. We can't get out of the yard. Sandpatch, um, Sandpatch, uh, um, Sherman Hill uh, is a, a good example. You have, I think, six scenarios. One of them is a free room. Actually, it doesn't even tell you. I thought for a long time Sherman Hill didn't have a free room. I was going to get on this rant and say, hey, Sherman Hill don't have a free room. That's why I prefer, you know, uh, Clinchfield or some of the, some of the other routes. Uh, Crane Creek has like four or five free rooms. But Sherman Hill does have a free room. They're a little sneaky. It is called Sand Patch Switching. And it's quite nice because sand patch switching, it gives you, now here's the problem, a lot of times these free roams don't give you a lot to work with, but the, this one in Sherman Hill, sand patch switching, it gives you a ton of, 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 car, of trains and cars. I mean, there are a ton of them out in the yard. Plus, there's a lot of different places to, uh, within the yard, the little side spurs going off in, in a full loop. And so there's a bunch of little things you can do. But what's frustrating still is you can't get out to that industry, the chemical plant that's just just uh, up away uh, a, a mile or so from the yard. Uh, you can't get to it, you know, because <clears throat> that doesn't have... Uh, you have to have, you know, um, you have to have the... Um, the turnouts to, to get to that industry and the, and you get red signals they're all blocked and it seemed to me just we've gone backwards I think back in in the uh, before train simulator back when it was still uh, real works they had they had the ability you know to hit the tab key and contact the, uh, the, the control tower you know and request make a request and we do this on the passenger routes. And sometimes we have to stop at a, a, at a red light, or a signal, and, and make a request. In the freight realm, I haven't seen it yet. In the freight realm, if, if you are stopped at a single, uh, and you just need to get up to an industry that's off a spur, it, there's no reason, there's no trains or anything coming, but there's no way you can make a request uh, to the dispatch. And so, come on, what, what is going on? This is a computer game. Computers are ideal for this. You know, for them to put in the dispatch, it should be, to me, fairly fairly simple. But, you know, maybe it's not. But uh, we're, we're blocked. We are we're blocked. So, in, in sandbox switching, you're stuck within, you know, you, you're in your sandbox. You can't get out of the sandbox. Mama, I want to get out of the sandbox. You know, I don't know what else to say. But it, it is frustrating. And, um, you know, that's Sherman Hill. And, and, and so, you know, and, and, and for that, the sandbox is only in the Cheyenne yard. If you want to be in Laramie, the, the Laramie uh, yard, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I'm, well, I tell you, if, if anybody had, can make comments and say, Gene, you're all wrong, and this game is playable, and this is what you should do, and this is how to do it. Please get in the comments and tell me how do you how do you play this freely? You know, I, I'm going to tell you some of my tips, and maybe you can help me out. And there's a better way of doing it. But like, in, in, there is no sandbox for Laramie. I mean, the best you can do is find the a, a timetable that you know leads from Laramie to a particular place you want to switch out of. But then you got somebody looking over your shoulder telling you what to do every second. You, you want to just throw him off the train and watch him roll down the hill. So, you know, so for, for Laramie, you know, it's good now we have the, in the tools, we have the, uh, the scenario planner. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have the scenario planner. So with the scenario planner, I built myself a, a kind of a free room where I can go from Laramie Yard uh, and, and I can go up to that, uh, that cement plant. Because there's no, there's no uh, singles between Laramie Yard and Cement Plant. And so what's nice about it is uh, I can't get out of Laramie Yard.
Yard because there is there is red signals that keep you from going outside of Laramie Yard. You can't get out of it. So you know what I what I do uh, other than a cement plant, which is a separate spur that you can get to without signals. <clears throat> my my way around it is to um, is to build the scenario planner where I have a service going at sometime early in the morning with a you know a mixed freight all the way to Cheyenne and then I have other services that go later in the afternoon with 50 cars mixed freight and uh, even another one with another uh, 20 or 30 cars of whatever you want to choose uh, refrigerators or whatever or tanks or what, whatever you want but there's only so many you can do uh, and, and put in the yard to, to be a service that's supposed to automatically take off later in the, in the afternoon. And then, you, and then I would say you would go hijack them, but you can't hijack them because here's something if you don't know it about the scenario planner, which is different from the regular timetables. The regular timetables, and you can get off and jump on another train and hijack it. Uh, and if I'm wrong about that, let me know about that too. But in the scenario planner, you may add five or six services as trains coming and going, but you can only have one that has a pilot to it, which they call pilot. You check the box and say this is the pilot. If you try to check two, it'll it'll knock off the other one to, and, and, and make the latest one the default pilot. So. Uh, what happens is if you have three services sitting in the yard waiting, you know, an hour or two before they take off on you, uh, what I do is I'll take the one that I'm pilot on, the, the, the one and only that I can have uh, control over, and instead of blowing down to Cheyenne, I go play in the yard and I start eating away at the other ones, pulling their cars off of them and putting them in the yard as, uh, uh, as free to play, uh, you know, a freight until there's just an engine standing there uh, without anything behind them. And of course, if you jump out of your engine and try to go into that one, you can't sit down. It won't let you sit down because it's not a service that has a, has a pilot availability. How, how great is that? I mean, how crazy is that? And so that's the problem with the scenario planner. Also, the, here's the other problem with the scenario planner. You can plan the time of day uh, and, and help me, help me, help me if you know better. I don't know how you put a date and weather to the scenario planner. I can only figure out how to make what time of day uh, a service starts, but I don't know how to change the weather to it. So the scenario planner really isn't <laughs> really isn't much help. And and also, um, I mean, it is, and that at least I can play in Laramie Yard and and, 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 sh and shovel some trains back and forth. Uh, once I spend a few hours, you know, building up the yard with the, you know, with the other services, uh, you know, what I stole off of them, I can then start playing and, and pushing cars up to the chemical plant, you know, only because there's no single barrier there. It's all behind uh, manual switches. But, you know, um, the limitation is um, I can't change the weather. And then and when I get bored with that, at, at any point, I can then... Uh, if, if I want to get out of there I can build myself a train and take my engine or, whatever, or two whatever I have as, as selected as uh, the primary and uh, hook up and I can actually take off and go all the way to Cheyenne because I made that I made that my service I made my you know even though I wasn't doing it for a few hours at any point when you're ready uh, you can you can always uh, you, you're free to go all the way to Cheyenne because once you get there the whole game will shut down and, and say good job and here's your performance but <laughs> you can't you can't even go there and switch you know that's that's the other thing that really bothers me I can't even get to Cheyenne yard uh, I, you know sometimes actually I think at some point I, I was I was able to go into another section of the yard and switch around a little bit at it you know but eventually even though you're a few hundred yards away from there supposedly uh you know drop dead point uh it it it, it pushed me out and you know you gotta be careful so I, I end up saving a lot 
by the way, uh, uh, you know, talking about all that, there there is some tips that I've been, uh, tricks I've been using, I should say, not tips so much as tricks, is uh, I, I've been saving my saves. You know, when you do, um, and this is another annoyance, another frustration, when you save. So let's say you're in Sherman Hill and, and you save your game. You can get out and go do something else and then reload and get back in. And you can come right back to that, that place you saved in Sherman Hill. You would think, you would think that if you made a save in Sherman Hill and then you decide to go play, you know, Clinchfield or, or a different route, and switch routes, that each route would have its own last save, but no. So, and what I used to do to get around it was I built different profiles. And so, I think with different profiles, if I wanted to do another route, I would go, that route would have a profile name and I would switch profiles and I think you can have a save for each profile. Because the, the, the game save, uh, you know, uh, actually is, is named on the, with, the, with the underscore your profile name. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. But, uh, you know, these are, these are my frustrations and I hope some of you uh, may have some answers, but I, I don't really think you do. <laughs> but I hope you do. Um, so, you know, uh, what else I was going to say, yeah. Uh, you got to be careful too. If you use the scenario planner and uh, you set yourself up as the uh, pilot, you know, the engineer of a particular locomotive that's going to go outside of the of your yard and, and go to full length uh, when you do that you're setting all the signals between you and there and if you have any services that you add to that scenario that you're planning that are supposed to come into the yard some of them may get blocked by you your own service who's supposed to go out <laughs> you know so uh, you got to think through all that and so most of the time if you think that you can have, you know, two or three cha trains of uh, different types of freight cars come in while you're messing about, uh, you'll find out maybe one will make it and the rest of them will get blocked because it's waiting for you to go the full length of your service, which you don't really want to do, if any of that makes sense. So some of the frustrations. And I've talked about a lot of this, but this is, this is what I really want to get to. It's, and, and hopefully get some comments about this and because most of all the train sim world reviews on routes is, you know they're about performance they're about frame rates they're about you know trees and if they look good if the routes long enough or not long enough or, or trains big enough and they have the proper number of rivets on them and the paint scheme not right and the horn doesn't sound good you know all that is I'm, I'm happy that people are talking about all that stuff all that stuff you know um, you, that that's all about immersion but when I'm talking about gameplay for me you know gameplay you know what should gameplay look like so you know it's great that I can get into a sandbox and you know build up a train but what do I mean by having a purpose? Well, most of these routes, you know, like Sherman Hill, which is a pretty long route, it has Cheyenne Yard, then it has a chemical plant right up the road from it. Then halfway between Cheyenne and Laramie, there's um, uh, you know, some kind of mining facility. Uh, so that's an industry where you can go get dirt or or, or some, I forget what, what it is and then all the way on the other side of Laramie you have another yard and you do have an industry there a uh, cement plant and so that's it you got two yards in two industries and actually one industry in the middle so there's three total industries however there's no way to go to all three industries in other words, if you want to go to the chemical plant, you can go. You can go on a timetable from from uh, from a yard to that chemical plant, or you can go from a timetable from the yard to the uh, to the mine, or you can go from Laramie Yard to the um, cement plant. You can't go 
from one yard and hit three industries and drop and pick up stuff on the way. That that that's never done. And in uh, the only route that that kind of thing happens on is the Canadian route, uh, Oakville. That one's fantastic. Uh, it doesn't go on for 30 miles. I think it's like uh, maybe 12 up, 12 miles or so of free roam. I can't remember how many. And there's another eight miles to go to the end. Um, I'm sorry, I don't remember the details of that. I just know there's a lot of different spurs and a plenty of uh, industry, and there's a plenty of playability to that one. It's the best as far as moving freight, and shuffling cars, and 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 doing the kind of thing I'm doing. Because you can go to one end of uh, Oakville and and uh, come up with a, a work order, and in that work order, say I need to. I need to drop off, uh, I need to pick up a bunch of, you know, hoppers up here at this, uh, at this water, uh, you know, um, marina area and then take them down to, uh, to the other side and drop them off there. But on the way, uh, we got, we got some tankers, we got some ethanol, we got this industry, you know, and, and if you got four or five industries, you can then actually sit in the yard and build a train and say okay industry a needs three cars and industry b needs these two or three and industry c needs these and you start building a train then you have a purpose of what you're doing in the yard and then when you get done building that train then you go run it you know you may take a break save where you are and then come back later and then go run it and then you're going to drop off and pick up uh, a b c d e e industries all the way and and then there's the fun of it but you know um uh oakville is is the only one that has that even clinchfield um and i love clinchfield is it like a single commodity type it's a coal it's a coal run uh but there is box cars and you know but other than the same problem of you can you can take box cars or mixed freight from one yard to any particular timetable selection you want. There's no there's no industries really. I mean there's there's the coal industry, but there's no other places. But I still love it. I mean, I, I, you know, you just you, you're in the coal realm and you're going to be moving coal cars and and you're going to be winding through the mountains and there's some fun to that. But uh, I I just. I just don't understand um, uh, that makes sense but I don't understand how we have something like um, Sherman Hill which is you know a beautiful long desert route we, we get some more miles and we get a lot of a lot of yard a lot of yard space uh, but not really much in between maybe in reality there isn't really much in between but there is at least three and we're not free to go play with the three. In other words, there's the yard, there's the chemical plant, there's the mine, and then there's the next yard with its cement plant. Well, with the chemical plant, the cement plant, and the mine, that's three separate industries besides the, besides the yards. But you can never go play with all three. You know, you can't, you can't, uh, yeah. And with mine, uh, if I go into my PC, my username or whatever, and I go into documents, then look for my documents and open that up. And then I'm looking for Train Sim World 2 folder. And then I go into the folder that says Saved and Save Games. You will notice there's um, a whole bunch of different files. And the one, and, and those files are your different profiles, your different uh, auto saves and stuff like that. There's some other saves in there. I'm not sure what they all do. But the one that we're looking for is the TSW save game underscore your profile name. So the one we're looking for is the TSW save game underscore your profile name dot SAV. That's the one we're looking for. If you take that, copy it, and paste it into a folder under whatever it is like you can see i made these full i created these folders here free roam laramie to yard sherman and you go into that and i have a copy of that you know but if i if i go play in cane creek and have a save there or something like that and i'm done with cane creek 
uh, I can always go back. This is silly, but you know, you got to get out of the game. You got to get it go into this folder, and I got to go into Free Roam Laramie Yard and make a copy of the save game file and and then stick it and overwrite the one that's in the uh, root of save save games and by doing that I now can uh, finish up where I left off or go back to where I left off in the free roam scenario that I was doing uh, for Sherman Hill and that way I can have multiple saves you know, in my mind, it would be great if uh, when you push the T key, instead of it telling you a bunch of tasks to do, it told you, uh, it gave you a work order. In other words, uh, and instead of it checking it off when you run over the particular yard spot that it wants you to run over, you can manually check it off and it doesn't know the difference. I would love that, you know, because then you would have a work order and then when you dropped off two cars... You know, car 15842 and car 15843, you drop those two off at the cement plant. You can go into the into your work order and check the box, two cars dropped off, two cars picked up. And then you move down your work order. And, and that's, to me, what the T key should be doing. So what I would like is for when you press the T key for it to have a work order and that work order would, would tell you the uh, uh, the car names and numbers you know and the location of where they're supposed to be dropped off or the location where they're supposed to be picked up and instead of you having to drive over a illuminated spot that you know triggers that you you completed an objective the work order just has a checkbox and you can check it yourself uh, because sometimes I get frustrated too that's one frustrating to talk about it, it needs me to you know go back over a turnout uh, with my locomotive and it's telling me to go like 50 50 75 yards past the turnout before I hit that illuminated spot and it's happy but I don't have to go that far you know it's like West well, way out of the way I just need to get past the turnout and I can switch it and then go down the next run. It's slowing me down. And so, you know, just another frustration to throw into all, all of it. You know, I've been, I've been ranting on here quite a bit. And I just want to get out there uh, things that I don't hear anybody talking about. There's a lot of talk about, you know, performance and scenery and the Unreal Engine. And we've seen other games with better looking scenery there's a lot of talk about stuff like that and the big locomotives and and the horns and stuff but uh i wanted to talk about playability it doesn't change the fact that in in, in all said and done i really like train sim world too it's it's my choice um I'm, I'm playing that more than i'm playing train simulator um and um because i love the you know the 3d modeling and in, in the uh the scenic ability and the locomotives and I, I you know I love the routes and stuff and I particularly like how the coupler you know system works and how I can get out and uncoupler and, and I don't get out as an engineer I don't get out of my seat and walk out and uncouple cars I I use the eight key like everybody did in train simulator and you know where you can so uh, you know that to me that's your uh, it's not the engineer's job to get out, you know, it's the conductor. So I play conductor most of the time. I, if you watched any of my videos, you see that, you know, with the three key, you can ride the back of the train and and then you can uh, get free of that with the eight key and uncouple and couple up and do all the things and set the brakes and, and, and you can do a lot of stuff like that, and, which really makes this the game of my choice that I like best. And... Um, and so I'm going to continue to play it and, and, and look forward to, you know, new routes coming out. And I'm always, when I look at a route, the first thing I do is to see whether or not it has a free roam in its scenarios. But, like I said, the problem with that is you can't change the weather and the date and stuff. Um, but uh, the scenario planner, I'm um, looking forward to maybe, you know, having more uh, um abilities with it less limitations and maybe like you know and who knows how long we can be on the way maybe by this august we can we be moving along with many of my my uh 
issues taken care of. And, you know, just because I'm, I'm here and I'm talking, the uh, delivery designer, that's, that's pretty nice too. And, uh, but it has a major flaw. And I think this one would probably definitely get taken care of. But, you know, I, I built a nice, beautiful paint scheme on, on some locomotives. Only to find out that as good as they look, I can't get the lettering. There's only one font for lettering. And if it's not the one that you need, which 95% of the time it's not going to be, you know, um, you got a problem. Most road names are not using the font that they have available. And, and it's just the one font. So it almost makes the livery designer, um, I don't know. So hopefully uh, somebody could comment on that and help me out with that too. Because, and, and I don't think we can, we can in, um, import anything either. So, But who knows? These things I'm just learning about. And this is the beauty of, uh, you know, YouTube and putting out videos like this is the community. Uh, I can hear my frustrations and many of them may be taken care of by listeners that know better. And many of your thoughts may be, um, uh, you know, answered or brought to attention by what I'm putting out. So hopefully this is helpful to some of you. And... Uh, Hopefully this has been helpful. If <laughs> you know, if nothing else, I didn't mean to you know, get anybody up in arms and aggravated or drop the game and move, move it. In fact, I, I, I love it. And so um, I just want to be able to railroad and enjoy uh, American freight railroading. And I do like some of the passenger routes. I you know I do like the New York. Uh, Metro and uh, Boston and and there's some of the ones in Europe. I, I love the uh, Arosa line. I think it's called. That one is so much fun. I, I spent more time with that than anything else. I think I love that route. So anyway, you know that's my rant for today. I, I know I had a lot to say. It's good being here and, and uh, talking to you guys, and we'll catch you next time.